Hi, everybody. This is a wee bit of alchemy. Number 52, a full year of wee bit of alchemy. And uh, so we've gone a, a, an entire year. We started back in uh, last year in May. And uh, in times when things were looking very dire here in New York City, particularly. And uh, we've come a long way in, in that year. So, um, uh, so welcome. And uh, I'm Rick Barrett. Welcome. So uh, tonight I'd like to talk a little bit about uh, two pole versus three pole systems, ways of thinking. And then we're going to move into the last of the elements we've been doing, working with the with the the Wuxing, the Chinese five elements, and we've taken it all the way up through. And now we're going to tonight we're going to be getting into earth as the the final uh, final one. And um, uh, so we'll, we'll talk about that again. And the idea behind this whole exploration is to not just think about it intellectually in abstract terms, but actually feel the, the different energies, feel the energies associated with the elements. So um, we will be playing with some earth energy, some earth chi tonight. So first let's talk a little bit about what I'm talking about with the uh, three pole versus two pole system. When I mean poles, I, in uh, the way we conventionally think about Chinese philosophy you know, is this is this yin and yang polarity that, that occurs there, which is a very useful way of thinking about it. And uh, uh, and it you know it's, it's something that, that you can observe in nature, you can observe it in human interaction. It's something that is going on. And just a way, it's a way of addressing it and saying that, oh, when things are expanding, getting bigger, getting hotter, whatever, that's more young. When things are cooling down, when they're beginning more condensed, when they're retreating, that's more yin. And you know, things are going out, that's young, and they're being receptive, that's yin. So this is something that is a uh, a way of thinking of it. And we also know that every yin contains yang and every yang contains yin. So it's never either or, it's always kind of both and, and it depends on your perspective from which you are viewing that determines the, the yininess and the yanginess of, of whatever it is you're looking at. You know, the, um, you know, one of the original ideas on it was that, you know, the, the dark and the light side of the mountain, you know, if it, uh, the same mountain, but if you look at it from one side, it's dark, and the other side, it's light. So that kind of gave birth to that idea, uh, at least that one story. So, uh, and that's, I think, you know, a, a very useful way of, of looking at it. But there's also another element there that uh, I think is, is something which is expressed a little bit better in um, in like the Ayurvedic tradition, and and that is that there's not just the expansion and contraction, but there's also a neutral pole. In in the Ayurvedic tradition, it's you know the sattva is this field of potentiality, which kind of aligns, at least in my mind, with the Wu Qi, this zero manifestation, infinite potentiality. From that emerges a, an extension. That is something that's moving from that, that infinite potentiality to take form. And that is going from sattva to rajas, which is the extension, which would correspond to the yang impulse, the impulse to go out, to create, to make something, to express, to create a form. And once the form is achieved, the next part of the cycle is that it returns to sattva, and that is the tamas, T-A-M-A-S, -A -A part of the, uh, the cycle. So we have, it's a three-pole system there. That is, we're going from neutral to positive to negative. 
And we're going from this put state of potentiality into a, um, an involution phase. That is, it's going from this, this neutral state into form. And then once it achieves form, then it moves into the evolution stage, which is then discards the form or dissolves the form and then returns back to, to nothing, to no form, to potentiality. And I find that useful uh, in my Taiji. It's, you know, to me, I, I see it as what we were talking about before, before about the, that still point. Like we you know, use the image of the pendulum moving back and forth. So as it moves and reaches its furthest extension, that's the yang phase. And there's a still point, the turnaround, which is um, where you, the pendulum moves towards zero acceleration, so zero velocity, and it turns around, but it turns around and in no time. So that point, there's a definite point where it turns around. We can observe it, but there is a point there. There's a, in that moment, there is no measurable time. And that is, then we go into the yin phase. And so I think that, I think it's a useful way of looking at that as well. We did some work with the pendulum and the stillness a few weeks ago. And this is just sort of adds to that conversation so that we are honoring the still point, honoring the nothing, the emptiness, however you want to describe it, the no form, and and seeing it not as a negative, not as a negative or as a uh, uh, an absence of, but it's actually a, a an opportunity. And we talked before about how we in our in each movement in the form, there is that there is that pendulum movement where we go from from the yang extension to the yin retreat or contraction, and in between there is a moment there at each at each transition where we pass through a still point, where we pass through, and it appears continuous because it's happening in no time, but it is in that point where the energy is maximized. That is where we mobilize the chi. And so if we can bring awareness to that and resonate with that stillness, then we can gather much more of the potentiality that is inherent within, within the art. Okay, any, any uh, questions or thoughts on that? Anybody? Uh, Richard. I, I just think often that that point is in every transition. Yes, I agree. I agree. And bringing awareness to it creates a whole, a whole other dimension to your game. So that you're able to occupy that still point and then gather your chi and then move forward. So, you know, Master Yang talks about um, coming out of the mystery. And that is, you know, you know another name for Tao, you know, that, that coming out of the mystery, that which cannot be named, that which cannot be known or understood. And so we move into that. And we, when we do that, we're in the gap between thoughts. We're out of the intellect at that point. And, but it allows, if it's done with awareness, but we moved outside of the, uh, outside of the constraints of the rational mind, then we're able to see the world in a different light than we do otherwise. Anybody else? All cool. Is that, uh, is that clear what I was talking about there? Everybody good? Everybody good on that? Okay, good. Anyway, so just another way of, another way of expressing what, we're, uh, what we've been talking about because that is happening with each 
as Richard said, with each transition, no matter how small or how brief, it's like, oh. And the more we can tap into that, the more uh, we can get out of the uh, out of each of our movements. Okay, so moving on, um, Earth. So we've uh, gone through the other parts, the other phases of the uh, of the of the Wu Xing, the uh, five elements, and we talk about them as elements. And just to really clarify, these are not elements like in the periodic table, where you got your your boron and your xenon and your uh, uranium. Um, this is not stuff. What we're talking about here is phases or relationships between things. So it is, it's saying that, okay, things are transitioning here. Things are constantly in a state of transition. So how do we describe these transitions? And in very gross terms, we talk about these five elements and they have certain qualities and and those a certain associations which correspond to body parts and and the seasons and emotions and da da da. And each of these um, elements phases has with it a an energy that um, excuse me. Sorry, sorry. Um, no, um, pardon me. So we have uh, an energy which then manifests in different different ways and in, uh, in, uh, in the body and in uh, your emotions and your um, the food you eat and the taste and smells and they're very extensive charts that that list all the different qualities associated with these things. With Earth, it's um, Earth is first of all it includes all the other elements. It kind of brings everything together. That's why I saved it for last. It um, the quality of Earth is that it's big and round and inclusive and it is integrative it integrates it it's centered it's grounded it's established it it gives the world a big hug and uh, that's what your hug is big and round so it's kind of, kind of a, a, an appropriate image to uh to think of it it is as an element, it, it's right after fire, which is the most young, and is just prior to metal. It feeds into metal, and metal is where things kind of really start. The marble drops off the table, and there's a, a sharp drop from yang to yin. But we're just kind of moving from the peak of, of the fire of summer, and then it starts to even out a little bit, and and move toward yin, but without going into, um, without being that precipitous drop of, of metal. The yin energy itself that, um, that we tap into from the earth is uh, the, it, it is, uh, the, the energy, the earth energy itself that we tap into, um, you know, through our feet, that, that is a, uh, that's a very yin energy, and and that actually has uh, a lot of quality. So there's a got two things involved here. You know, one is the element of Earth, which has that that big round inclusive quality, but there's also the 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 Earth chi that we get to when we're when we're really rooted, and that's very yin. And the movement of yin energy is up. It, uh, even the body is going down, form is going down, but the energy is rising. So the yin meridians actually are coming from, from up, from down to up and from out to in. And the yang ones are in reverse. So um, 
we're going to play with uh, with the uh, the earth chi and um, I, I it's one that that is I think um, super important for just about everybody because just about everybody I I know is to some degree yin deficient. There's a um, the You know, so much of the activity in the 21st century is happening up here. We're in the information age, the digital age, and all of that is very young. It's very expansive and uh, intellectual, and, and it is keeping us in our heads. And we tend to move toward a uh, objectification of life when we do that. And things get very abstract, and that's very young. And so, and there's also this, this need to do, 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 the ability to calm down. Although I think a lot of us have, uh, against our will, have had to calm down quite a bit over the last year. The, uh, there's still that, that sense of, I should be doing more. I should be doing more. And there's that, that, uh, that relentless drive to do, do, do is a very young impulse. And so a lot of people, are yin deficient. That is, they are incapable of just accessing that yin energy and really just residing in it, abiding in the yin. And uh, anything you can do to just kind of change that dynamic a little bit for yourself is very good for your health, well being, and your sanity. And uh, Highly, highly recommended. So um, let's do a little meditation, uh, a little standing meditation where we can play a little bit with the earth energy, and then we'll uh, we'll bring them bring them together. Okay, so once you stand up. Step out. Establish your three pillars. Feel the balls of your feet. Center your weight on the balls of your feet. Allow the weight to spread throughout the whole foot, but the balls of the feet are the bullseye. Soften your knees. Reach through the crown of your head. Tuck in your chin. And open the jade pillow gate at the base of the skull. Relax your lower back. Allow your Wei Lu to drop. Your it's an energy point on your toxic. Allow that to, to drop. So as your Wei Lu, your toxic is dropping, your back is softening. You're reaching the opposite direction with your the crown of your head. So you feel the elongation of your spine, opening spaces between the vertebrae. Relaxing your muscles to this. When I say reach with your head, it's like it's not like you're pushing your the crown of your head up. You're just reaching with it. There's no there's no tension in your neck as you do that. Although you will feel a stretch happening as you open the jade pillow gate, and that's really just kind of correcting a chronic 
pattern of neck tension. Reach with the elbows and feel, feel that extension there. Feel the, the joints, feel the shoulder joints opening up as you do that, creating space in your shoulder joints. Point your index fingers. You feel the chi in your hands. Feel the tingling heat pulsing. The, feel the increased circulation. To the earth with your toes. Barrel down and just allow your, your hip joints to relax. That soon quad. Place the tip of your tongue on the roof of your mouth, breathe through the nose. As you inhale, feel your diaphragm pressing down on your internal organs. And you exhale, feel the diaphragm releasing. Relax your chest and just allow the breath to happen in the in the abdomen. You're creating space in your chest by pressing down with your diaphragm. Think, release, and carry. Coming up as your lower body sinks. Reach with your elbows, open, reach with the fingers. Feel the expansion. You continue and open. Feel the expansion. Feel the young. The young energy of expansion. Reach down to your elbows. Compress. Think. Feel yourself getting smaller, more compressed, more compact. Yourself sinking into the earth. And you do that, allow the yin chi to rise to the bulb. The balls of your feet or to the bubbling well and feel the balls of your feet. It creates a, creates a, a, a structure that allows for the energy to come through the, bu the bubbling well even more freely. Inhale, open. And 
Neil Young, expansion, sort of opening, shimmering. The elbows and bring it in. Condense. Feel the in. Feel the earth key. Think into the right leg, up your left, and step out a little wider so you have a nice broad stance. Um, a or horse riding school. You still want to feel the, the energy centered over the balls of the feet. Knees are soft. Elbows are reaching. Reaching with the crown of your head. Okay. Letting go of any extraneous muscular tension. And this is posture. Oh, we're going to do a um, a bear meditation, uh, an earth bear meditation. This is a bear posture in Chin Yi. And spiral down to the right. Left hand up. Reach with the elbow, the left elbow. Bring your hand onto the fist. It's an empty fist, very soft. And sink and reach out with your left elbow. Reach out with your right elbow also, but you're feeling that that connection there. Your weight is about 60% in your left leg now. And down, back to center. Bear posture. Stability. Centered, grounded, round, integrated. Now down to the left, right hand circles up, reach out, your little ball of the right foot, set the right knee, spiral down to the left, and then Turn to the right. Feel the stability, the strength, the power, the integration. The center. down to the right and feel the ball of the left foot set the left knee Bow right turn left
take a little deeper. Feel, feel that earth connection. Feel your root, feel that energetic connection with the earth. Feel the con continuity of, of energy throughout the whole system, throughout your whole body. And we talked before about being an open system. That is, you're not just circulating the chi within your own body, you are you're plugged into the big chi. The chi of the earth is rising. The chi from the heavens is, is descending down through the crown, through your by we and, and thinking. And going to yang chi is exiting through your feet. The yin chi is exiting through the top of your head. And you're a channel. For all this energy. And in the earth posture, we allow that to circulate throughout the whole system. To the barrel down to the left, right hand circles up. Feel the ball of the right foot, set the right knee, barrel down to the left, and then turn to the right. Reach to the elbows. At the center. Think. Spiral down, feel the ball of your right foot at the right knee, spiral down to the left and step in with the left foot. Take a deep breath. Disappear the chi. Press down. Just like you're pushing down the big plunger. Pushing the chi out through the bottom of your feet. Disappearing. Emptying out. Dissolve into the emptiness. Allow yourself to reside, to abide in the gap between thoughts. This is the Body, mind, spirit integration. A super conscious state. Take a seat. Let's talk about that a little bit.
How'd that go? Good, good. Lynn. My lower bank back. Thanks you most profoundly. <laughs> Wonderful. I felt the pain all is that less? Earth, yeah, oh yeah, much less. All that earth energy sort of coming in there and settling and feeling integrative, I guess, but certainly mm, nice. good. Yeah, yeah. Beautiful. <laughs> That's great. Alex. I um I could I was looking at my chair and I could see the the energy rippling as the, the whole swimming in chi thing really kind of hit me there because I could see it kind of wafting and rippling throughout. So it's clear <laughs> it was flowing pretty good. Wonderful. <laughs> Thank you. That's great. <laughs> Dennis, did you have something? Yeah, felt felt very solid, heavy, planted. Good. Good. Valerie. Um, at the end, after we disappeared the chi, I, I felt very solid in my feet and in my legs, but I found my upper body starting to kind of circle, and then it just was kind of rocking back and forth, and it, I kind of tried to stop it, but <laughs> the, the airport didn't really want to stop. I mean, it wasn't, I don't even know if Scott could perceive it, you could see it, yeah, but yeah, there was that tilting and just kind of this kind of thing and you know I kept checking into my feet are my feet solid or my is the weight moving nope solid but just you know yeah kind of like a willow tree kind of beautiful idea yeah That's beautiful image beautiful Richard um <clears throat> right right before you said at one point that you're shrinking I had felt myself condensing, and uh, that's a that's a wonderful yin image. Wonderful. I, I haven't had that before. That's that's terrific. Thank you. <laughs> Great. Good. Yeah. It, it, part of the uh, the mission here is to get us comfortable with the yin, because is we we are so attracted to the bright lights and shiny objects. And to, to move into the condensing, the darkness, and to embrace the darkness as, as, as valuable as the light, you know, is, um, you know, that's, you know, that's part of, part, of, part of the journey is to be able to do that until you can embrace the darkness, embrace the contraction, embrace the condensation, you're, you're you're missing half of the half of the game. You know, there's this urge to ascend, to reach upward, and it's like, no, no, no. Tree is only can can, can grow as, as tall as its roots. So you know, feel the roots, feel feel into that, and embrace that, and then that allows for even more expansion. Scott. Yeah, that was, I mean, when we first started, when we first lifted our arms up, it was, you know, that universal post, it was like, there was just a steel bar in front of me, and it was just so solid. Um, very cool. Can you talk a little bit about exactly what you mean by relax, by softening the knees? Softening the knees, sure. There, um, I mean, all of us, I think, are, are, are pretty familiar with the idea of, like, of, not keeping the knees locked. And that's a, uh, we're, we're in a rather small part of humanity to, uh, to, to think about that. But I think there's, it's a, uh, you know, uh, it's an important concept that, that we, we all share. Softening just means that you're letting go of muscular contraction as much as possible and relying on the intrinsic structure of the knee to uh, and the legs to to do their work. So the um, I think a lot of people hold tight because they're afraid, you know, afraid of they're not going to be able to stand up 
support themselves, etc., and or fear of, of pain that if I don't hold myself a certain way, it'll hurt. My back will hurt, my sciatica will hurt, my knees will hurt, my whatever. So the uh, softening the knees is just giving permission to the body to say it's okay. I don't. I don't have to work so hard just to be able to stand up. And I can just, I can trust the connective tissue system to do the job for me. Nick, you have something to add? Um, no, I was just gonna ask if it's fair to say that, that the subjective experience of that softening might feel a bit like springiness. Okay, bringing this is good. I, um, yeah, yeah, um, yeah. I like to think of it even more as a. I mean, there's definitely that quality to the structure, but in, just in terms of the softening, it's almost like like dropping a sandbag. You know, kind of, it's just you know, it's still maintains its form more or less but it's there's a thud you know and there's they're just it's oh okay springiness has a quality of of we're gonna go the other way we're gonna yes yeah springiness yeah, we're, has a bounce. We're, gonna, we're gonna bounce out of this yeah and it <laughs> I, I, i'm a big fan don't get me wrong i'm a big fan of springiness but uh, in terms of of earth it's like oh no we want we want to feel you know poured concrete you know, the, the, uh, there's this, you know, a real sense of, oh yeah, this is down and it's relaxed, but it's really, really strong. You know, the tensile strength of the knee is really, really strong. And if I line it up correctly, I got nothing to worry about. And, you know, part of the, um, you know, the earth thing, you know, in, in, is the sense of security that with your, you know, with the, with the, the knee comes this sense of, um, you know, groundedness of, um, in other traditions, like say, if you're thinking about it in terms of, of, you know, a uh, chakra system, you know, the earth is, is that which creates structure, which creates form. So we, you know, we're mixing a couple of modalities here, but I think it's, it's fair to do in this case. And that is to, ah, oh, that, oh yeah, I, I can trust this. This is a good foundation and I really don't have to work on it. It's like, it's like, it's, it's, it's there. It's like your house, once, once your foundation's poured, your house just kind of forgets about it. It's, it's not thinking about, oh, you know, I really have to compensate for this foundation because it might give in any minute. It's like, no, no, it's there. It's as, it's, it's going to continue. And I think that's what we're looking for there also with that soft knee. It's like, yeah, yeah, I can trust this. Anybody else? Uh, all good, all good, okay. Um, let's see, we got the... <coughs> You're going to review some of the others? Yeah, so let's... Uh, we did that meditation, the whooshing meditation a few weeks ago. And we'll do this one seated. And now that we've gone through the, through the different elements and see that we have at least five different flavors, although each flavor can be subdivided into multiple flavors. But we got, uh, so we, the, the cycle of generation is, um, is the way the seasons are lined up so that the wood of spring feeds the fire of summer, which then uh, it feeds the earth of, of late summer, which goes into the, um, uh, the, the metal of, of of fall and then into the the uh, water of of winter, 
And one of the things about Earth too, in terms of the uh, the Chinese calendar, is that that it has its own season there, which is late summer, but it's also considered to be happening between each of the each transition between the two seasons, between any two seasons. So you're going from wood. So there's like generally considered like a two week period there of transition, where it's woody earth going into earthy fire, going into fire, going into fiery earth to earthy earth to, and then kind of going on like that. So it is has that quality of being woven into all the other elements as well. So it's it's the the big integrator of, of, of a lot there. So we each of those energies has its own characteristics and and a, an associated organ with it that follows that same pattern, that same constructive pattern. So the so we're just gonna do a, a, sit, a sitting meditation now. And I'll guide you through. And the idea here is to bring your attention to the associated organ with the element. And even though when the in Chinese medicine, when they're talking about organs, they're really talking about functions rather than actual cellular blobs that uh, have biological um, properties. To, they're talking about, you know, the the energies that are associated with those. So, but each of those, despite the fact that that that's, uh, we're talking about more about the function, they're still rooted in those those actual um, internal organs. And we're in this meditation, we're talking about the yin organs, and so that's the uh, uh, so each season. Each element has a yin and a yang organ associated. We're just focusing on the yin ones right now. And springtime, would we start with liver? And just bringing your awareness to that, to your liver, on the right side, just at the uh, at the bottom of your rib cage, and breathe and just feel. And we start from the outside, so we can feel that general vicinity. But as you get attuned to it, you become more and more aware of the organ itself. You become more and more cognizant, more and more sensitive to the actual organ itself. And by breathing and feeling, the mind leads the chi, the E leads the chi to the organ. And so wood has this expansive quality, it's going from yin to yang. It's going, it's directional, it's and it's reaching out. So from the, from metal or from wood, we go to uh, fire, which is the heart. On the left side, it's kind of left center. And fire is associated with joy and um, equanimity and compassion, fulfillment. We're taking this driving force, this expansive force of the liver, and we're adding joy to the mix. We're kind of creating this, yeah, Master Young would call it a happy anger in terms of martial arts. And feel, we're in the season of summer now in the Chinese calendar. So allow that joy to fill you. And 
from there, we're going to go to earth, to the spleen. And the spleen is uh, on the right side, on the outside of the stomach. I'm sorry, it's on the left side. No, it's on the left side. It's on the left side, so it's all the way to the left on the outside of the stomach. And spleen, spleen is earth. Equanimity, or it, this is actually more equanimity, more balanced, centered, grounded, integrated, inclusive. And earth then leads to metal, which is the lungs. So your chest, you can, you don't even really have to feel this because you can feel it every time you take a breath. You can feel the expansion of your lungs. You're taking that joy feeds into the equanimity, the peace, the, the integration of, of earth, which then feeds into metal. So we're beginning going from, from yang to yin. And one of the qualities of, of metal is a letting go. And we practice that with each breath. We inhale and we fill up. We expand, young. And as we exhale, we let go. We throw away the breath. Just like we throw away the chi. We don't hang on to the chi. We don't store the chi. We don't hoard it. We, ah, the cup. Chi comes in, chi goes out. As long as you're plugged into the big G, there will never be a deficit. It's just a question of whether you can use the G that is coming in or not, whether or not you can successfully circulate it. But as we breathe, practice this process of filling up and letting go. Letting go of the joy, letting go of the the peace and allowing it to move and regenerate, moving toward the very end, moving toward darkness, the darkness of winter. Let's take this to water, which is kidneys. That's in your lower back. The top of the kidney is just above the rib line sort of it's sandwiched between your colon and your diaphragm. And water chi is wisdom, is peace, stillness. And uh, it gathers, think of a uh, hibernating bear in winter, you're gathering. And this provides a foundation for the rest of the season. If you skimp over this, I know for a long part, much of my life, I was like, I would rail against the, the fatigue that I would feel in the winter time. Like, oh, where did my energy go? I just don't have that zip that I had in the summertime. And I would fight it and I would push myself. But no, we want to use the seasons. If we, the more we can resonate with the seasons, it's just another aspect of resonating with the big chi. Now water, cultivating that then feeds into the wood. And we start it over again and we're back to the liver. Hmm. 
Let me just take a moment and just breathe into that and just feel that circulation. It's good to do this consciously, but once you set up the the pattern, once the body mind gets gets familiar with this, it says, "Oh, I kind of like that," and it just does it. And it just it does it better than we can ever do. Cool. Okay. Uh, any questions, thoughts, uh, Alex? Hi. Yeah, I, um, I, there seems to be a lot of parallels between this one and the microcosmic orbit in terms of the going, are, are, is, it, is it just a coincidence or is there more to it than that? Uh, no, there, there, there's a, uh, that whole Chinese methodology it, that uh, they, they, they've had a few thousand years to work on it and they, they've, they've managed to integrate a whole bunch of different stuff so it's uh, fair enough. <laughs> it, it's, it's a it's a it, it's you know a cohesive system. Gotcha. It's not the only way to look at the world, but it's a it, it it's a handy one to have to to have that as your uh, you know as as one of your arrows in your quiver. It's just that when when I do the microcosmic orbit, you get a, a lot of the sense of it starts to build, and then you just keep going on, and you know the faster you do it, it it's right. a and this seems like it has a lot of that same feel to it. Right. And same thing with, with the micro, you know, the microcosmic or the macrocosmic orbit. That is, you you do it, you get you establish the pathway, you establish the awareness, you get rid of the kinks in the hose, and it takes care of itself. It it, it takes care of itself, and all you gotta do is just, you know, throw another log on the fire every now and then. <laughs> so Thank you. anybody else? Any other questions, thoughts, before we sign off for two weeks? Valerie. Um, ever since we sure, you first uh, did this practice a couple weeks ago, I've been doing it every night before I go to sleep. Oh, sometimes, nice. it, sometimes it's a struggle to get to the last organ, <laughs> um, <laughs> but uh, it, it, just puts, it puts me out. You know, it does put me out, wow. and I, I really, really, really enjoy it. Really wonderful, it. wonderful. Thank you. That's great. That's terrific. Good. I think that's a that's a beautiful note to end on there. Um, great. So thank you all. Love you so much. Thank you, Maria. Um, <laughs> thank, thank you, Maria. Maria. Yeah. Thank you, thank you everyone. A wild ride for those Love you guys. Who are <laughs> Love you. Have a great trip. Yeah. Come see you in a couple well. of weeks. Okay. See you in a couple of weeks. Great. Bye. 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 Thank you so much. Thanks, Rick.